today we're going to talk about first layer knowledge, something you already know about. I'll give you some examples. To lose weight, you must consume less calories than your body needs. To save money, you need to live within your budget. To make money in the stock market, you need to buy index funds. These are things that people already know and to some degree understand. But they are absolutely worthless. And this is why. People take first layer knowledge for granted. Find your passion and you'll never work another day in your life. It is one of the most absurd pieces of advice that you could ever come across. But this is something that people buy into on a surface level. But when it comes to becoming a practitioner, becoming a technician, to really know that subject matter intimately, uh, this is where people start to have issues. One of the things is these are platitudes. These are generalities. These are not things of substance. These are not things of practicality. Take someone who likes to turn riches for a hobby. Like to go in your car, go in your garage, pull up the hood, turn a few wrenches, tune a few things, and it's fun and you really, really like it, it relaxes you, but the minute that you have to do it for money and you don't get to choose when you do it, which is very, very important, but you must do it consistently within a defined time frame to get a check, the fun goes out of it. I don't know how many people I've heard, oh man, this was my passion, this was my hobby, the, you know, these how things were going, but the minute that I had to do it on a regular basis, uh, the joy came out of it. I didn't really like it. It was never your real passion. You think doing what you like to do every day is going to become a drudgery? No, it's not. It never was your passion. It was just something you like to do. It was something that you claimed as a passion because most of us have no clue to what our passion is. That we know what we want to do. We know that. But what do we want to do for the rest of our life? What is it? Now, for me, my thing is held consistently because it is something I've done for decades. Lifelong reader, been writing for about 20 years, and it's not something I say is a passion. I say it's something that's a vocation. Because there's a lot of things I don't like about writing. There's a lot of things I don't like about creating videos. It's not a passion, it's a vocation. It is something that has enough juice to keep me doing it even though I don't like it. And I like more about creating videos. I like more about dropping this knowledge than I don't. I mean, there's only a few things I don't like about creating videos and writing. But be truth be known, there's some things I just don't like. Which brings us into the conundrum of first layer knowledge. Everyone knows about it. I put up a video where I go beyond first layer knowledge, but because I include first layer knowledge, people are like, man, I already know that. Give us something new. But because I front loaded the video with first layer knowledge, people didn't watch it and even get to the second layer knowledge. If you want to be successful, it's going to take more than first layer knowledge. It's going to take more than a topical understanding. You're going to have to become a technician at least. This is someone who knows the subject matter. You know it forward. You know it backwards. You actually know it. You're really good at it. That's the minimum. You've got to be technically proficient in whatever. If you want to be good at Facebook, you need to be technically proficient at Facebook. I used to be very technically proficient at Facebook. Facebook was my largest source of income. Facebook made multiple changes. I said, screw that. I'm not doing that anymore. I've always been technically proficient at YouTube, and that's where I choose to do my stuff now, and I'm going to become more technically proficient in other video platforms and podcasting, which at the moment I'm not proficient at all. I, I don't even, I know the first layer of knowledge of, hey, you create a podcast, you go ahead and you get uh, a host and then you filter it through iTunes and these other 
other things beyond that that's what I, that's all I know that's it and this is the thing that kills people because you have a certain level of technical knowledge you really counteract this or even dismiss it because you're like I already know about that I'm looking for the magic jelly beans I'm looking for the secret ingredient I'm looking for that esoteric knowledge that no one else knows because if you do get that kind of knowledge you have an immediate competitive advantage because with that like me when I started YouTube and there's no one else talking about storage units <laughs> I mean it just it just does I wish that I could share the feeling of being able to have that kind of information asymmetry in the marketplace because it's hard and that's what first layer knowledge proficiency does it has you hunting for an unfair or a competitive advantage that nobody knows about so you can get paid you can get paid paid, 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 paid because you don't have to then become a technician which I mean once again using myself as an example you can do a lot you can make mistakes you can screw up but because you have first mover advantage and you're continue to execute you can still make a lot of money even though you're not technically proficient I think to wait for that kind of opportunity or to even look for something like that is just plain stupid the world moves so fast now uh, the world is such an evolving marketplace that let's say you did find something like that you're not going to have um, probably the two and a half years that I had you're not gonna have that you're probably gonna have um, a few weeks or a few months at most that's what you're gonna have and that's one of the things that really kills so many people because you're waiting for the world to miss a first layer opportunity and that's just not going to happen not anymore it's just too competitive for that but if you want to win if you want to win big you can become technically proficient which takes second layer knowledge and will still win in a very competitive market because most of the players are not proficient they don't know what they're doing they have that first layer of knowledge I don't know how many times I've had someone come in on the video man I already know that but did you execute on that did you groom that did you take a certain ownership of that knowledge did you go deeper than the first layer did you go deeper than the second layer did you go deeper in the third layer no because once you have first layer knowledge, then it's just the incentive to go deeper isn't there because it's like everybody knows that. So you assume that everybody is making money. You assume that everyone has these competitive advantages. So the marketplace is difficult and challenging because everyone has first layer knowledge. All of that low hanging fruit's gone. So what you gotta do is put on your hat and I'm gonna give you a good example of this. Now, I run my YouTube channel completely different than other people run their channels. I know what to do. I know that if I change my thumbnails a little bit, I know that if I follow YouTube's pro protocols and I created similar content, I put up videos that people are looking for, which is, based upon my analysis, it's not gonna make me a lot of money in AdSense. I would have a more successful YouTube channel from views and subscribers. But I would probably be leaving 30, 40 grand a month on the table. And that's one of the hardest things I think to get people to understand is there's a difference between making fame, getting attention, and making money. The same mechanisms that can get you uh, 1.5 million subscribers and you make six thousand dollars a month AdSense is not the same knowledge or positioning that's gonna have you making 25 30 40 grand a month from selling online courses and books and stuff with a 
very much smaller subscriber base. Because uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out some stuff because YouTube punishes me because I send so much traffic off the platform. But if I don't send traffic off the platform to my website and get people to buy my courses and to get them on my email list, I lose in the long term. Short term, I get beat up. I get punched left and right. But long term, which is what I care about, I'm going to come out on top because I'll be able to control my economics. But this is one of the things that a lot of YouTubers are now coming to reckoning with. They're, they're now beginning to say, hey, maybe I need to sell something. Maybe I need to put something out in the marketplace. Maybe I need to become a salesperson. Maybe I need to become a merchant because YouTube has changed the game on AdSense and they're not making the money they're used to. I mean, some people have been completely demonetized and some people have taken a 75% hit, a uh, 90% hit in income. So you've got that to contend with. But once again, you, and you, you'll see that I was first and you'll see that many, many people will start doing everything that I'm doing in three to five years because not because they want to, but because they have to. And that's one of the things about becoming a technician and becoming a student because a technician is someone who can do things very well. A student is someone who goes beyond technical proficiency. And then, you know, the master, that's a whole nother level. I mastered storage auctions. That's the only thing that I've mastered. I mastered storage auctions. I mastered the distribution systems of storage auctions. I own that. So I do have part of my template, part of my DNA, a way to master something. And in, in the video that I put up earlier about overwork, that's how you're going to do it. You're not going to hack your way. You're not going to get, quote, all of this knowledge or these special esoteric uh, tricks by doing the least for the most. And that's where a lot of people are. They want to do the least for the most. And that just typically does not work out because people are very complex. Uh, people are very, very different. Very, uh, people are lazy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I will say. People are lazy because that's something you got to get rid of if you want to just become a technician. I am a technician of YouTube. I'm a technician of, store, well, I'm a master of storage auctions, a technician of YouTube. First layer on blogging. I'm first layer on Instagram. I'm first layer on Facebook. And I have to pick what do I want to become a, you know, a technician of next? Or what do I become, want to become a student of? Or do, what do I want to become a, a master of? What, what do I want? Because the thing is, you get to pick this. And you get to pick something that can give you joy, that can make you happy, that can give you internal fulfillment. Because once you become a technician, and I'm going to tell you what happened with me and YouTube. First six, almost eight months, I absolutely hated making YouTube videos. It felt foreign. It felt weird. I'm sitting there talking to the camera like an idiot. I just didn't like it. But the results, oh, the results were uncanny. And something happened. The more te technicianly proficient I became with YouTube, and this is the days when you had to run stuff through handbrake. You only had like a 10-minute limit. There were so many things that you had to do to put up a video. And as I started to own the process, as I started to become good at the process, I started to enjoy it. And part of that enjoyment and that fulfillment came from doing something that was hard and being successful. You're never going to be happy doing something easy and being successful. You may like it. You may take the results. But you're not going to build that unshakable confidence. You're not going to build that real level of human integrity and substance that you just get from doing hard stuff and winning. Like the dudes that go to ranger school, they come out like pumped. It's like, I did this, I did this, I did that. Navy SEALs, pumped. Uh, riders, 
pumped. It's like so many people have a book in them, but you know, for all of the people that have a book in them and all the people that actually complete the book, and then one, and there's a bunch of people who have completed the book and it's in the drawer somewhere, and then the people who have written the book, completed the book, and put it out there and been successful. It's only a small percentage of people because you look at the numbers, it's like everyone's writing the book. No, everyone's not. Everyone has the the amenable gall to say I'm writing a book or to try to put something out there. But there's very few people who actually write a book, start it, finish it, and market it and do a cover. Very few, very, very few people. Uh, the number of folks who want to do that stuff. So you should be proud of yourself if you've written a book and you've gotten to that level. And my advice to you will be write another one. Even before you get off into all the, the promoting and stuff, write another book. But that's what it's going to take. And once you get to second level knowledge, then you know that, oh, thumbnails are super important. Oh, and this is something else too. And I, I will get people on YouTube will get pissed at me. If you have juiced your channel to a certain manner, you don't have to follow all the rules of YouTube, which is a good thumbnail, a good title, good tags. All of that stuff is irrelevant if you know what you're doing. Uh, I put up a few videos because I, I talked about it. My name triggers the demonetization or, an, or a review. So I stopped putting my name in and there was a few videos that I actually forgot to tag and they did better. Because there's a lot of things that go on. Do you know that if YouTube's pushing your channel, even if people don't subscribe, YouTube will send a recommendation to these people to come back and watch your channel, even if you haven't subscribed. And all it takes is you watching three to four videos. That's it, three to four videos, and you're gonna get that recommendation because I've tested it. And there's channels I'm not subscribed to, I'll watch four videos in a row, and invariably I'll get that, come on back, check this channel out. So this is one of the things, like if YouTube really likes you, your channel is going to explode. If YouTube doesn't like you, you're on your own, player. You're on your own. But how many of you really are getting into that second layer of knowledge? Because you're gonna have to think, you're gonna have to study, you're gonna have to work, you're gonna have to experience delayed gratification. All that comes with second level knowledge. But when you get to second level knowledge, the rewards are sick. The reward, storage auctions. I wrote my first book, 1.5 million, self-published author. I only sold 15,000, but why did that work? Price point, I sold it at 59, I sold it at 99. I didn't try to sell this at seven or $10 and try to arbitrage the, 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 the spread. I just knew that there wasn't that many folks. And this is one of my uh, theories, I call it the pretty girl, I call it the ugly girl theory, that if you're an ugly girl, you don't need to be putting out. You need to make dudes wait for sex, seriously. Because a pretty girl can do porn, she can take it up the butt, she can do all this stuff and she still can get married because dudes like, oh, she pretty. I don't care if she's a porn star. But you, you kinda ugly, so it ain't gonna work. It's just facts, it's just facts, I've seen this. I've seen good, solid women who are not like particularly attractive go lonely, but these girls who do porn, they get married in a heartbeat. It is the wildest thing, but that's just another social thing that you know I'll probably talk about on another channel. But if you want to explode your business and you want to become a better person and you want to experience amazing growth, amazing income, you need to move into the second layer of knowledge, not this first tertiary stuff that everyone knows because everyone knows it, but so many people do not apply it because they already know it. They completely ignore it because the thing is, once you start getting into it beyond the first level, it gets hard. And then when you get results, then you can like, well, this is what I did. And you can monetize your results if you become good enough. And that's another thing. You gotta have talent or you gotta develop talent to make it today. That's just how it is. You've got to be better than good to make money online in the world today. Those days of the first layer, easy money, they're gone. They're over. You're not gonna have it. Before you 
guys, I'm going to put a special here that will help you develop second level knowledge and third level knowledge. It's called Writing for Cash in the Superior Mindset Bundle. Seven courses that will give you information, insights, and practical exercises where you can get your second layer of knowledge on where you can start fulfilling yourself, serving people, and making money. So that will be right after this. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, and ring that bell. It seems to be important, but I don't know about that, but ring it anyway, and I'll see you in the next video.